Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah, Introduction to Relativity and Quantum Mechanics. This is lecture number five, when we'll be talking today about time dilation and length contraction. Let's start off by considering time dilation, and we'll consider sort of a classic Gedanken experiment that's a thought experiment that was proposed by Einstein to explain time dilation. In the last lecture, we discussed time dilation, length contraction, the relativity of simultaneity in very um, qualitative descriptive terms. Now we're going to start to um, put some math to, to the uh, situations and actually work out some, some uh, formula. So let's start with this uh, Gedanken experiment uh, that we, that, that's shown here. So this, the experiment starts by with a cart uh, rolling on a rail or something, so this is maybe like some sort of a train car, um, moving with uniform velocity v to the right. Inside the car we have Anna. Um, outside the car on the ground at rest we have Bob. Okay. Now um, this this inside this car there's something, uh, basically what you have is a um, a light source which I failed to to write down. Let me uh, Make sure to get that down. So this this right here, in addition to being a detector, is also a sort of a light gun. So it's some sort of light source that can give out light pulses. Okay. Um, so there's a pulse that goes up. It bounces off this mirror at the top of the car and then comes back down. the The distance between the the light gun and the mirror and the mirror and the detector is L. Okay, that's the vertical distance between the two. And again, it's moving to the right with velocity v. Okay, now there are two uh, m really important things to remember when we think about this experiment. One is that um, the speed of light c is the same for all inertia fr inertial frames. That's one of Einstein's postulates. So we have to keep that in mind when we look at this, in particular for Anna and, Bo and, and Bob's frames. And then also, um, everyone, in particular Anna and Bob in this case, must agree about which events happened. They, they must agree that there was a light pulse, that there was a reflection off the mirror, and that there was a detection event. Those are three distinct events that happen at a particular point in space and time. And therefore, both Anna and Bob must agree on those events. Okay, now let's calculate the round trip time um, for the light pulse as observed by Anna and observed by Bob, okay, and then um, by comparing those two times we should be able to arrive at a relationship between the times measured by Anna and Bob and that um, hopefully will give us the time dilation relationship, okay. So let's start with Anna. For Anna it's pretty easy because for Anna she's in the, she's in the rest frame of the cart and so the light pulse just goes up, reflects, and comes straight back down. Okay, so for one, for one, um, uh, for one way for the light pulse to go up to, and reach the mirror, okay, then um, let's give Anna the primed coordinate system, okay, and so the time it takes for that for a half half of the trip, okay, is equal to um, just the length of the trip, which is L, as I mentioned, divided by the speed of light, C. Okay, now we're interested in the round trip, so let's put twos here. They don't really matter in this case, but we'll see. But but in any case, we want the, we want the, the, basically, we want the event to happen, the second event to happen, or the third event, the detection to happen at the same place as the light pulse emit, emission, so we'll calculate the, the round trip. And just, you'll see why we do this later, but we can simplify, we can um, uh, just do a little uh, algebra on this and uh, we can write this expression like that, okay? We just square it basically. Okay, 